Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Master Series, Part 13. And yeah, the videos are a bit long, so I'm going to try and keep this one short if I can. But at least I'm just giving you guys one video, you know, one video a day um, or less. Okay, so that you guys can catch up with the videos. But yeah, um, just a quick little tip here from the previous video where we spoke about foods. I, I always watch my videos as soon as I upload them, and I was a little bit confused with the meat that only gave us 10 grams, okay, because I was sure that I ate meat that gave me above 20 grams. So the meat that you're looking for is wolf meat. Um, wolf meat, I think, is the only meat that gives you four pieces, you know, in one piece of meat. Um, and that's basically perfect. You know, we said we were going to eat like five, four pieces of meat. So wolf meat, wolf meat is definitely perfect. Doesn't give you a lot of fat, but gives you about 25 grams of protein, which is very, very good. Okay. Then of course, your sardines are excellent for your um, protein needs. And then we've got a perfect character here at the moment. But if you drink half of a canteen, Okay, so you drink until it's 50% and you cancel it, and you drink again until it's 50% and you cancel it. That's a really, really good combination for water. And then sweet corn, okay, corn and potatoes are, of course, excellent, okay, but if you get sweet corn, guys, sweet corn is, um, sweet corn is really, really good, okay, really, really good. Let's just open this up here quickly. I could have used the Bushman, but it's fine. So yeah, I just, just want to give you guys a little bit of a recap here. Um, so let's just eat all. Yeah, so we're going to eat both, you know, both of them. Look at the fat. The fat is extremely low, okay? Very, very low. Of course, if you eat, you know, if you eat potatoes and corn, it's fine. But this, this, is, a, this is a very, very nice superfood for me, guys. A very, very, very nice superfood for me. If you get canned corn, it's really, really nice. Okay? We're not done yet. We're getting a bit of delayed reactions here for some for some reason. I'm not sure why. But, yeah, 74 grams of carbs. Okay? And not a lot of fat, of all, uh, fat at all. Okay? So, if you get canned corn, definitely keep, keep it and don't waste it. Okay? Go put it in your base. It's going to help you egg a lot. Okay, so that's it. Protein, carbs, water, done. Now, for the next part of the Master Series, we're going to talk about base building, guys. Now, if you want tips on how to make your base unraidable, okay, by using exploits um, so that people can't raid your base um, unless they use C4s, then... Um, you're at the wrong place, okay? Here at Immersive Gaming, we only try and immerse ourselves, try and keep things as realistic as possible. And on the next wipe on Survival Evolved, I'm definitely going to implement rules so that there isn't such a big discrepancy uh, between experienced base builders that knows all the exploits and just a normal base build, you know, that just wants to build something something nice. Because one thing that I do see on most servers is people that, that just want to build something that they're proud of, okay, and enjoy themselves. They usually get raided to death. And then the people that raid are usually the people that use all the exploits so that they can't get raided. But in the next 0.7 wipe of scum, I'm going to implement rules on Survival Evolved to basically implement rules that disallows all exploits of base building and then yeah we're not gonna have any ugly bases with 50 50 doors in front of each other and um, i'm still thinking how to um, counter that either by just allowing raids from friday to sunday or um, increasing the zapper damage Okay, but I'm still, I'm still thinking between the two. Um, I, I I really want the lock picking to be just as difficult as C4. Okay, um, yeah. Um, in any case, 
I'm going to give you guys five five base examples today. Okay, so at least the introduction was just five minutes long. The first, my favorite base location is the snow, guys. Um, is the snow area. Okay, um, this is not a bad area because the airfield is down below. You've got a beautiful view of everything. Um, basically, you're very close to the prison. You're very close to the dam. Um, you're very close to the airport, you're close to that, you're close to some towns, okay, there's a town for you, there's a town for you, there's the um, B2 castle, which is very nice as well, okay, and um, yeah, when, when, I, when I build my base, I usually focus on nine sectors, so if I focus here, okay, if I want to build my base here, I look at all the loot that I can get, in this section okay so this is my favorite spot but i do know that a lot of drops land in these three open areas okay so if you want to build a base um where you can get regular cargo drops or where you're not too far away from like here i'm not a f too far away from the quarries okay um not too far i'm not uh, this is a very military um kind of um, placement if you build your base somewhere year you know you can build it up here in the snow or year then you're going to get a lot of cargo drops there okay if you build your base year or year you're going to focus on the naval base and other towns the biggest thing that you have to focus on when you build the base is all the resources that you need to build the base Okay, so you're going to need to be close to trees. Okay, you're going to need to be close to a lot of cars for the scrap metal. You're going to need to be um, close to the quarry. Okay, um, like to the quarries or the brick factory that's over here or the scrap yard. Okay, so I would say the best, the two best base locations if you want to get resources quickly for your base is these two sectors. Either this sector so you're close to the quarry and not too far away from this or this sector, okay, or right in the middle. Doesn't really matter, but this this place isn't too bad to be close to all the resources. But that's definitely something that you should consider when building a base. How far away is all the resources that I need to build my base, okay? And if any of you if if any of you want to write this down. You can, okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to um, craft the wall quickly, okay, so if any of you, any of you want to write this down, you can write this down, we're just going to, we're just going to do five meter walls, okay, um, so there, okay, so, okay, Lathias, that wasn't, that wasn't, um, that wasn't very clever, but in any case, guys, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Okay, so here's a five meter wall, which is half of a full wall. So you need sticks and planks. Okay, which which is very easy. You just need trees close to you, okay, to build a wall. Just trees, and you're fine. Okay. The second thing is when you upgrade it. Now, okay, now you need sticks, scrap metal, nails or bolts. Okay, barbed wire. And just the uh, you know, toolboxes. Um, the tool that you use is not that difficult to find, okay? But this is where you start need to think about your base location. Where am I going to get scrap metal? Where am I going to get nails or bolts, okay? Where am I going to get um, blue wires, okay? So where, how close is vehicle repair shops to me so that I can, or just, you know, just um, any... Like vehicle repair shops are really good because you can take the um, the wires to charge, you know, to charge a car, and the cables, charging cables, and you can cut them up for blue wires. Okay, but you can get them in towns as well. So how close are these resources to me? Okay, first of all, these resources here. Then when you want to go to the, and you need to upgrade your walls to level three at least so that or your doors to level three so that you can put three locks on it and two zappers, okay, which is necessary. But level three, again, um, just the scrap metal and the bolts. I actually like level three because level three is actually just hard on the toolboxes. 
Um, it's not that hard on on the other resources, you know, but you just have to focus on toolboxes and scrap metal. Then, this is where the, qu the quarries come in, okay? So, the, the, first of all, you're going to need cement, and then you're going to need gravel, and you're going to need bricks, and you're going to need cans, okay? And you're going to need sandbags. So this this is where this is where stuff gets real, okay. So your main resources is the gravel. I might mix the two up, guys. Forgive me, okay. Main resources is the gravel by the quarries, the cement, okay, by this factory next to the airfield, and then the bricks by the brick factory. You can get these resources in the big city or in any city that's got like construction sites, okay. You can get all, any of those resources there. But I mean, this is this is definitely where where things you know where things start getting complicated, and then to get to the max level, okay. Now, this is where where you have to grind your ass off. A heck of like guys, we just we just got a, we've just got a little piece of wall here, okay. If you build a long wall, it's going to be a lot more resources. So this is where you need a ton of scrap metal, a ton of cement, a ton of gravel. Okay, freaking cups um, or water bottles, or whatever. I really don't know what the water bottles is for, probably to mix the cement. Okay, and then of course you're going to need the sandbags again. So it's it's basically surrounding the cement. You need water, okay, and cement and sand, okay, to to mix the cement. And then of course you're going to need a lot of a lot of toolboxes. So if you it, you know you don't really have to focus on this in the beginning okay i would say all you have to focus on is the trees scrap metal bolts and the wires okay and that's it and toolboxes that's all you have to focus on because you only need to go to level three um without working yourself to death and then, of course, you upgrade your wall to level three. You know, you can you can put the max protection on it. But that's I just wanted to show you guys. You know, that's that's what's um, very very important. So I can get to level three quite easily. Where the where well, where the dirt hits the road is where you go to bricks or where you go to cement. So my favorite base location is in the snow. Okay, the reason that my why it's my favorite is there aren't a lot of bushes, guys. That's the big thing for me, okay? The chances that you're going to get camped um, in the snow is very, very, you know, very, very small. Like on this uphill, how many angles do the guys have on me? They must either hide behind these trees, and if I come up here with a bike, okay, it's going to be very difficult for them to hide themselves from me. Um, yes, they can hide behind the wall or whatever the case may be. But the big thing is for me is this is my door. They have to, I'm only giving them one entrance. Okay. So when they are raiding me, I can use any of these trees to see them clear as day in front of uh, this door. Okay. So I'm showing you this spot. I don't want to show you the spot that I'm going to choose on the next wipe of Survival Evolved, but I am just going to build a normal base. Um, when, if you find an open area, don't think about it as flip it, I have to walk to the trees. Think about it, if someone is raiding me and they're outside my base, they've got no cover. Okay, they can't hide from me. That is why I love open spaces. So I don't care where you build a base, in the south, in the middle, or in the snow. Okay, make sure that it's very open around your base. So that if you die, you can come back, okay, and kill them. Now, m some of you might ask, Luthias, kill them with what? Well, glad you asked, okay? So all you do is you mark certain spots, okay? Of course, you'll have to hide it, okay? Which is the only difficult part. And hiding something in the snow... It's not the easiest thing in the world. Okay, but of course, you have to think that if I'm going to die, I'm going to spawn here. You know, like, basically, you're going to need chests all around here. Okay, but what you can do is you can plant a flag. 
Okay, plant a flag here so that you can see the area and then bury a chest somewhere where it's very difficult to see it. Okay, and then um, put, it, put a kit in it, a gun, um, a helmet, armor. Okay, that's about all you need. You need a gun, a helmet and armor. Okay, so that you can sustain a few shots, or if you if you don't want, if you don't want someone to score, you know, if you don't want someone to win a lot or find a lot, if they ever find your buried loot, you know, then you you can put like little like a little tower here, guys. But you know, that's going to be a little bit. Uh, I don't like I don't like that idea. The idea that I use, I bury the loot, okay, and then I put one. Like, I'll bury a crate there. I'll bury a crate far that way. I'll bury a crate far that way. And then, how do you unbury it when you spawn? Because you don't want to waste time, un you know, crafting a shovel when you spawn. You just want to craft a spear so that you can fight the puppets. What I would do is I would find a location and place a flag again. Okay? So these are quite advanced tips, guys. Um... I can't really show it to you on stream, okay? But these are these are methods that you can use. So there isn't a bush, but I mean, you can use anything. When the guy finds it, you know, there's a shovel in it. He's like, yeah, I don't want a shovel, okay? So I'll just put like a chest here, and then I'll put the shovel in this chest, okay? And I'll put a I'll put a flag here to, you know, just let me know that this is this is where the chest is. Then I can run here, get the chest. If somebody, if somebody like in a bush, guys, just just hide the freaking thing, okay? Or if you want to craft the shovel, fine, but that's going to waste a lot of time. I would rather just run, get the shovel, okay, unbury the loot, and then I can take them on from the outside. For me personally, I hate defending my base from the inside, okay? I don't see where the guys are. They know exactly where I am. Okay, think about it like this. This is your base. You are inside. This is your base walls. Okay, you are inside of your base walls. The guy that's here, I don't care how far he is looking at you with the sniper. He knows you're here. You don't know he's there. This guy knows where you are. This guy knows where you are. This guy knows where you are. And this guy knows where you are. You've got a, like, you've usually got about five people aiming at you. Okay, that knows where you are. Is it difficult to get into your base? Yes, but... You can't really kill them unless you've got like 30 grenades. And even if you kill them, it's going to be very difficult for you to loot them. Because even if you kill the door, uh, the guy in front of the door, you can't open the door. Otherwise, the sniper might be here, shoot you, you know, take your loot. And then the guy, you know, the guy that you've killed in front of the door takes his loot again. Okay. But if you respawn, you can flag this guy. Okay. And then he says, oh, oh no, shit, shit, shoot, hit, hit the roof. Now these guys are confused, okay? Now you can either go for this guy or you can flank around this way. They don't know where you go from here, okay? You can hunt them down. Now it's very difficult for them to stand in front of the door because they have to find you, and then you can fight them. If you're alone versus five people... It's difficult, but at least you've got the advantage, okay? They they have to look for you, or at least you've got a fighting chance. Now, if you're inside the base, you know, sure, you've got your advantages, but me, in my personal experience, guys, I don't I don't like being trapped inside, um, you know, inside of my base. Um, if I've got a heck of a lot of grenades, you know, I can, I can give them hell. If your walls aren't upgraded, um... You know, to kingdom come, then you can't really shoot people through it. You know, if your if your walls are very weak, then you can shoot people through the walls, but they can shoot you through the walls as well. And again, just like you can throw a grenade, okay? Just like you can throw a grenade, this guy can throw a grenade as well. Okay, I was a little bit, I was a little, I was a, I was a little bit too, too low on the wall there, okay guys? I was a little bit too low on the wall there. Okay guys, um, a quick tip here, as you can see my body is gone, okay? 
Um, my body could be lying somewhere, okay? My body could have flown somewhere with a grenade. But let's just, let's just test this quickly, okay? So here's just my guns, nothing else. Let's log out quickly and log back in. Okay, guys, that was that was roughly 60 seconds, but okay, here we spot our body, okay? Always remember which way you were running. Like I was running this way, okay? When I when I got when I got killed by my own grenade. So always uh, if I don't find my body, I start walking in circles. Okay, just to look for my body because your body can fly in different directions. And logging out or logging back in does help. Okay, I think give it about 10 or 20 seconds if you're in a rush. Give it about 10 or 20 seconds. Okay. Let's put our guns back here. Okay, so um, it is quite difficult for me to get a grenade over there. Okay, let's just add this to the quick slot. Put the hand in. But for these guys, the guys that are fighting against me, it's not very difficult, okay, to get a grenade. Okay, so that's that's extremely fun. But I mean, for the other guys, okay, they don't, they don't run much risk because if I hold shift and G, okay, I can... There, okay. Okay, so I, I can shift G it just over the wall. So just like me inside can throw the grenade over the wall, they can throw the grenades over the walls as well, okay? And it's always good to stand on a corner if you think you're going to miss it. So again, shift G. Okay, if I think I'm going to miss it, okay, then I can use the wall as cover. So let's aim a little bit higher. There we go. Okay, so that takes some practice, but what I'm trying to tell you is they can kill you just as well as you can kill them, okay? Let's try and aim really, really higher. Yeah, you see? Got a bit of a lot. So, if you've got a lot of grenades, yes, but you can't see anything and they can see everything. So, my strategy is to... Place the crates, you know, bury the crates in random hidden spots with the blueprint of a flag. And if you place, um, you know, flags around, blueprints of flags around your base, then no one can build a base very, very close to you. No one can really build a raid base, you know, like a little, like a little hut, okay, um, close to you. Like just, you know, just one, two, three, four wooden walls with chest inside, okay, that they upgrade the little walls a little bit so that they're going to raid you later. The, you know, they can do that. But you can, if they are that advanced um, to build a raid base close to you, you can, you know, you can outsmart them. You can have flags all around your base with hidden chests, you know, that has got um, just, a, just a cheap chest, li you know, lying in different places. Um, to get the shovel. But I mean, if you go for a shovel immediately, the thing is that you need an axe. Okay, that's the only pain in the butt. You need an axe. So you need to craft an axe and then you need to craft a shovel, which is a major waste of time. And that's why I that's why I just put a chest down, okay, with, with the shovel so that I can use it like that. But in any case, yeah, so that's it. Open space, guys. I don't, I do not want to spawn back at my base. It cost me more fame. And then secondly, um, I don't know who's outside. I don't know how many people are outside. This guy can literally sit here and lockpick, okay? And then if he hears me pull a pin, he does this. And I throw the grenade. I throw the grenade here, he does this, okay? So it's very difficult for me, and I can't probably even go on shooting through this wall. But if I'm outside, and I sneak up on him, and I've got an open flat area, okay, again, I will show my favorite my favorite location um, on the next wipe, but if it's an open area, I can snipe him, okay? Even, and then again, guys, if you're based in an open area, don't, don't try and kill them all. Again, this analogy... One guy here, one guy here, one guy here, one guy here, one guy here. Kill this, kill this guy, okay? And 
go lie in a bush or behind a rock or something, just cover his body, okay? Or loot him quickly and put his, like, like um, put his weapons, you know? If you can have a hiking backpack in that trade, that would be good, you know? Or take his loot. It doesn't really matter, but don't leave him anything, okay? Don't leave him a gun. You can leave anything you want, but just take all his guns. If you don't have space for his guns, take out his ammunition, okay? Take all his ammunition that he can't shoot back. Okay, so now, now he's now this guy sorted out. You can move here, you know. You can move there. It doesn't matter. Or you can just stand still. Or you can try and find a position to look at the to look at the front. Okay, so you can kill this guy. Run here quickly. Try and get an angle and just sit still. Just sit still. If any of them lock pick it, okay, you snipe them in the head or you shoot them in the head. Okay, and then you reposition again. Like if you're lucky enough, if you if you can do kill boxes, okay, and you can get like a, a sniper rifle, okay, with a suppressor on it, car ninety eight at least, or an SVD. You know, if you don't want to bury a M eighty two outside, then a car ninety eight or an SVD with a suppressor. Okay, then you just then you just double tap him in the head. Okay. And then let them come to you. Let them come to you. In my crate, I like having an AR with a red dot and a four times, which I can swap between, and a sniper rifle, okay? So if you're sitting still, if you're lying still in a bush or in grass, okay, that's also good not having a backpack, okay? If you want to just put a ghillie suit in your chest and an AR and a sniper rifle, that's cool. Because it, when you lie down in grass, guys, like this, this is this is what the PvP guys do, do. They normally do it naked. But if you lie like this in grass with no backpack on and a ghillie suit, and the p guys are looking for you, okay? They're going to be, they, stand, they are standing up because they're looking for you. You're not looking for them. You're just standing still. So then, you know, you can snipe them. Okay, or when they have their back, back on you, you can kill them. And then reposition yourself and lie down again. Okay, so they they are at a disadvantage. They were at an advantage when they were raiding your base, when you didn't have a clue where they were. Now, when you start killing them, you've got the advantage. And it's not about winning the fight. It's about not letting this guy raid you. Not letting the clan raid you. Okay? That's the that's that's the biggest thing. If you can get this guy's stuff to despawn, fantastic. You just make sure nobody can get close to the body. Okay, whatever he had on him, you know, let it despawn. You you don't run to the door and try and loot the guy that was lock picking your door. Okay, that's going to be suicidal, especially if he's got two teammates. He's probably got someone covering him. You know, that's for sure. You want to kill him and make sure none of his friends comes close to his body so that the loot can despawn and so that you can just cast them fame points, okay? You just cast them fame points constantly. And if you kill one of their friends on the outside, maybe they had the C4s on them or maybe they had this lock picker's gear on them and then you just you just empty them out, okay? Um, but in any case, that's one stra strategy. And then again, the, the base defense, guys. I'm going to show you five base base designs, okay? The snow is one of my favorites because I can wear whatever I want and I don't care about heat. Secondly, people don't like the snow area, okay? They don't really like being in here. So that's a defensive system on its own. He can't come here and lockpick naked. He has to have a constant, um, you know, a constant uh, clothing. Someone's going to need, he's going to need to get clothing all the time. Otherwise, he's going to freeze freeze himself to death trying to lockpick in the snow. Okay, if you're living in the desert, a guy can lockpick you naked. It's actually better that he's naked, you know, so that he doesn't overheat. So a lot of advantages um, to the snow. So this is the only base that I'm going to show you the minimum lock protection that you need. You can put, you only need to upgrade a door three times okay to put this i'm just gonna i like showing you guys everything i know there's some of you that's having a snooze festival festival here but let's just um let me just show you what i mean even a double door double door single door it doesn't really matter okay so do that 
Okay, let's just um, set set the spawn. Okay, and then we go the door. Okay, so you don't even need to upgrade this. You need to upgrade. See, now you can only put two locks on and one shocker. That's not good. Okay, upgrade it once. Now you can put two zappers on and two locks. Okay, so one upgrade is already good enough. It's the zappers that are important. It's not really the locks that are important. Okay, and you can find, you know, you can find if you, if you only put two enforced locks on a door. Okay then you need less enforced locks. But getting two zappers on your doors is extremely important. And then, as I said, you just need level three. Okay, now you can put all three locks on it. Um, so you don't need to go to the brick or the cement. You know, this is fine for maximum protection. Three enforced locks and doubles, uh, double lock protection. Okay, so, yeah. Um, and what you can do with the base, guys, is really, really, really nice. Okay, so this is a small little base. I can park my pickup truck in here. I can park my bike in here. It's not a lot of walls, guys. Yes, I will work myself to death to get this base looking like this, but it's not a lot of material. The base isn't extremely big. Okay, so there's the bike. There's the car. Of course, they can throw grenades inside here and probably... No hurt them over time. Let's just see this one. 75, yeah. The grenades can hurt the cars, okay, over time, but it's going to take a lot of grenades. So there's three locks with, with two zappers. Here's three locks with two zappers, and here's three locks with one zapper. That gives them nine enforced locks with two double zappers, two max double zappers, and one single max um, zapper, okay? Okay. And yeah, now I'm just going to show you, you know, small things that you can do to to make your base look a little bit better. Of course, you have to protect that flag, okay? But small little things, you know, like um, the log sh the log shed here. I'm just going to show you guys inside. This is just stuff that I left here. It stayed here the entire day. Um, I was testing all the meats. You can see the deer meat, bear meat, goat meat, donkey meat, horse meat. I was, I've been busy, guys. I've been busy, okay? Eating all kinds of different meat. Okay, and then we come inside here. And you can make your base look nice, okay? If you're wondering why is there two fires, you can't really cook meat, even if you add fat to it, to to make it as hot as possible. You can't really cook meat in the snow, okay? But if you t put two fires next to each other, okay, not, um, it's going to be difficult for you to put two of these um, fire rings, okay, next to each other, but just an improvised fireplace. You put an improvised fireplace there and there, add fat to both of them so that they're at the maximum heat, and then you can cook five pieces of meat, okay? Just put, just put all the pieces of meat right here in the middle, above the two fires, and you'll be able to cook your meat, okay, um, in the snow, which is really, really cool. So you can decorate your base, okay, with various things. Here we've got our uh, lovely little hunting, our um, uh, DT-11B shotgun. We've got a nice car 98 there, okay, and then we've got our, again, to get into the room, so now we're getting to 12 enforced locks, okay, and a zapper. If you want to put your best loot inside here. Even my cleaver is still here. That's bloody fantastic, man. You've got your little bed here. Um, you've got your TV. Okay, maybe we can get real TVs. You've got that decoration. You've got your M82 here and your MK18, which you can put the, the cloth over. Okay, that looks very good. And just for interest to say, guys, wherever you play, where, the, where all the gear uh, get, get like a set, you know, a desert set, a snow set, a camo set. Try and make that one of your missions to get a set because you are going to tell me that this guy looks very cool because he's got the best, you know, he's got the best armor on him, okay? So you guys will say this is, this is, the, this is the coolest look there is, man. This is like the coolest look there is. And I agree with you. It's, it's not a bad look, Okay. Let me see where I put it quickly. 
There we go. Okay. So if we take this off. Getting undressed here. Yeah, baby, yeah. Okay. Okay. Looking cool again. Looking cool again. Okay. It, uh, like, guys, yeah, you can die and then you've spent hours looking for the gear. But collect it. You don't have to run around with it. Collect it. Get the helmet. Put it in, the, in your base. You know, get the pieces one by one and then one day just go outside and rock it okay and even with this with these gu two guns on my back you know i don't look extremely cool but if i come here to my if i come here to my room okay then we're looking a lot sicker okay then we are looking a lot sicker with our, you know, with our snow um, M82. Like, be a collector, guys. Be a collector of rare loot, okay? And try and enjoy yourself. And if you get raided, tough shit, okay? But I just wanted to show you guys now what you can do with base design. So I'm just going to set the weather here to nothing. Okay. I just wanted to show you guys, you know, how you can decorate the base. And I'm not going to show you the locks again, but on a simple base like this, a very, very simple base, okay, um, that's completely made out of base building elements. You can let, you can force a clan to go through, what was it, two, not 12, 12 enforced locks with advanced zappers, okay? Without making something that looks, you know, that, do, that doesn't look very good. Okay. And again, if you, you can use foundations not to block the entrance, but you can use foundations to look over walls. Okay. You can use this. Like, they can't see me. Okay. But I can maybe do this and see them. Hey, peekaboo. Okay. You can use the foundations. To be half as high as your walls. Again, not to close your freaking door, okay? So that you're so that you're not raidable, just for tactical uses. Okay? You can do this. And like I say, this guy, this guy isn't this guy isn't um powerless. But again, I don't like doing this. But again, you know, this guy isn't powerless. He can throw it over both walls. Okay. And yes, he's quite safe inside here, yeah, but how am I going to get to that guy? How am I going to get to the guy's loot? Okay, sure. How are they going to get to my loot? They, they're trying to break in, guys. That's how they're going to get to my loot. The thing is, how, how am I going to stop their raid? Yes, I can cast them fame points. That's a good thing. If you've got 20, you know, if you've got 20 grenades and you can miss all the grenades that they, that they throw at you, you know, maybe you can hide like this. Maybe you can hide like this, you know? You can, I don't think this is going to work. No. You know, but, um, it's a stand up here, you know, but yes, you can, you can lob grenades. You can defend your base with grenades. Okay. But yeah. Hopefully, the, the first base is just to explain to you guys why it's my favorite base location. There's not a lot of bushes for people to hide. Okay, I can use the foundations for height. Of course, I can't wait for them to bring in uh, modular base building because I love playing around with the base, but the, 
the interior, you know, like the cabin and the foundations are very lackluster for me at the moment. The the walls and the, the, the different designs that I can do and the different ideas that I can do, I'm very excited for. But because we don't have modular base building yet, I can't really open up my wings, you know, and be extremely creative with the base. And guys, um, don't, don't do gaps. Don't do gaps. Again, you're one person, or maybe you're a clan of five, I don't care. But don't do gaps like, um, let me see here. This is your base, okay? So you make like a hallway and a little tower here so that you can look through gaps at your entrance. They can look through that gaps as well, okay? If you shoot them through, if you can shoot them through the gap, they can shoot you through the gap, okay? And again, they know where you are. You are not 100% sure where they are, okay? And again, with grenades and stuff like that, it's very dangerous. If you throw a grenade in, okay, into the open here, again, he can just run around the corner. If he throws a grenade into your little, your little place here that you can shoot him through, you know, if he throws a grenade in there, it's... Um, you know, it's difficult. And you're putting yourself in a, again, in, in a situation where all of them knows where you are. And trust me, if you're against five players, you know, um, it's difficult. If you're great at PvP, good. But just know that the guys at your door can hear you, okay? They can sit still in front of your door. You have to move to this place where you can look at them at the door, okay? Okay. And apparently people are using various sound things, you know, with like I've heard a person of using a sound, it's like a sound sheet where um, on their screen, you know, a signal will, will tell them where the sound is coming from. Okay. Or they use some kind of sound software where they can hear like two or 300 meters away. But Never mind that. The sound will give you away. They can sit still. You can't. You have to defend your base if you're inside the base. And they will hear you moving there and probably kill you, okay, before you can kill them, except if you're extremely good at PvP. So that's it, guys. This video is extremely long again. But this, yeah, this is it. You can have a lot of fun with, ba with base building. And this game revitalizes you when you try different things when you play around with base designs the more creative you get the more you try and be creative in the game do something new and you know not repeat the same steps then this game will feel exciting for you a lot of the time trust me um any survival game that i've played okay for years the more I try, that's why I love figuring things out because the process of me figuring things out is extremely exciting. The process of me knowing how to do five things and doing those five things every day, that's not exciting, okay? That kills the game for me in the end. Okay, so snow base, a single cabin, foundations to this foundation height, okay, to use it to your advantage. And then, you know, a small little place to hide your vehicles in. And that's it. Not a lot of resources. So let's go to the next to the next base location. And you guys can say, okay, this number one, you guys can say which one you enjoy. Now, a nice little fun one here, okay, is I want to be left alone. That's that's what I call this base. I call this base, please leave me alone. I don't want to be raided. Uh, I don't want to really interact, okay, with different people. Um, you know, I just want to be, I just want to be safe. So, let me just see here. Did I plant a flag? Okay. Guys, just give me a second here. I don't think I planted a flag. And I think I hit my base so well, maybe I can't even find it. Oh, here it is. Okay, that didn't take very long. Okay, so this is on this island, okay? The possibility that you're going to run into trouble on this island is very small. If you've got a massive base, your chances of being detected is higher, okay? 
And then again, with this base, you're going to want to bury your loot as much as possible. The fantastic thing is you've got forest around you. You've got the resources for the base building. You've got a town that will give you scrap metal, nails, and bolts, okay? And a few construction sites. But you can level up your base to level three very, very easily, okay? And then there's a cave here where if you go into the cave, just go to scummap.com. There's a cave that you can go in around this area where there will be like three or four crates inside that gives you easy that gives you easy guns okay um so and there's a bunker so there's a bunker there's a town and there's easy loot okay and the chance that you're going to be left alone is quite easy you know quite high the chance that you're going to be found with the with the brown and green base okay in a brown and green area is quite good camo okay and even a small little base like this, okay, you can spawn here at your shelter. So you can spawn at a shelter or a bed. Okay, where the heck is the bed? Or or that bed or the fancy bed or the fancy bed. And it's of course it's always the last thing, the last thing that you craft. So if you craft if you've got a bed, you craft one of these, you will spawn at them. You know? Or if you had one of these and you craft a bed, you'll spawn at the bed. You don't have to destroy this thing to spawn at the bed. It's always the last shelter or bed that you craft where you will spawn. Okay, and a small little place like this has got, um, you know, got a lot of um, loot space that you can put inside here. And again, you can bury your chests, okay, all over the place. Got a little fireplace, okay, here to cook your meat. And it's just... It's, it's, it's not a lot of work at all, but you can just live here, okay? Try and live in peace and farm this island to death while, while World War V, you know, is happening on the main island. And then if you get someone, you know, that comes there with a boat, you know, you are close to the ocean, so if someone circles the island with a boat, maybe they can spot you, you know? But it's, there's not a lot of clans, guys, that, that drives around with, with boats, Okay, so it will probably not be an extremely dangerous clan that spots you here. You know, then you can defend your your base. And again, if this guy lockpicks this, you know, this door, you can hide a boat somewhere, park the boat, shoot him with an M82 from a distance. If he doesn't have a sniper rifle with a scope or a very, you know, or a, or a sniper rifle, you can literally sit in a boat, guys, in the open and shoot the poop out of him, okay? And there's nothing you'll be able to do. When he starts shooting at you, you can just, you know, drive away. But you you don't need to give him an opportunity to lockpick. Look at this angle. There is an angle. I can shoot from there. I can shoot from there. I can shoot from this ocean. I've got a lot of angles here, Okay. So is it bad having a base in a ditch like this because everyone can kill you, everyone can hide you? Yes. But turn it around. If someone's raiding you, there's a, you've got a big advantage as well, okay? But again, an open field is better because it gives you more area to defend your base, okay? So this number two, please don't hurt me, okay? I don't want to get raided. Then number three, and probably the safest, okay, out of all of them, according to me, is the cabin. No, not the safest. You guys can tell me which one you like most, okay? It's not the safest, but in my opinion, this is the, this is the, this is the least amount of work that I've ever done, okay? Yeah, I'm lucky with my teleporting. This is the least amount of work that I've ever done to protect my loot, okay? Now, I've made some space here so that you can maybe park a bike inside. Of course, if you want to get, you know, if you want to have space for a car and a bike, then you're going to need to expand on this base. But this doesn't have to be my main base, guys. I use a cabin as a backup base. I use a cabin as as a way to just protect the, like, if you're a YouTuber or you're a streamer, then it's cool to have a base like this where no one's watching, okay? Because people are going to raid the base that that they know where it is, okay? But you can have a secret base, okay, that you don't show anyone and that doesn't take you a lot of time to make, okay? So this is a perfect place, okay? It's a cabin. 
Um, this cabin is just below the castle and above the town, one of my favorite cabins. And yes, again, a heck of a lot of cover, okay? You don't want to be inside your base when five people are hiding here. But again, you'd like to use all this area, okay, to defend your base. But again, there's too much in your way. You can't really snipe someone. There's too much in your way. So if the base is in an open field, which I will show you now, and there's trees, you know, there's trees there in the distance all around your base, then you can use like a 90 degree angle to kill anyone that, that sits in front of this door. There's no locks on here, guys. I'm just giving you a, a, you know, a simple example. Three enforced locks, double zapper, enforced lock, double zapper. And it's not, it doesn't take a lot of work. Normally, I build the base closed completely. Okay, wall, door, and that's it. And if you want to go wild, then a layer and a layer and a layer. But this is just a safe house for me. Okay. Um, something hidden. If people, But again, it can be found. People know about cabins. Okay. And people know about this, this place. Where did I put this place? Uh, let me just check here quickly. Did I put a flag down there? I can't even remember if I put a flag down there. But in any case, let me just um, let us just get here quickly. I think it was around here. How lucky are we? How lucky are we? Okay. Not very lucky. Okay, guys. So, yeah, first of all, it was a snow base. Then it was the please don't kill me. Then it was the cabin. Okay. The fourth base is definitely a base that takes the least amount of resources. Okay. To, to protect your loot. I don't like it, but it's something that's in the game. I would have preferred them to not allow people to build a base in a train tunnel, okay? But it is there. Hopefully one day trains comes into the game, you know, that people can jump on top. In Like they've got a, we've got, we're going to get an airplane, guys. Why can't we get a train? You know, why can't we get a train that just drives up and down and people can jump on the train and have train fights or have easy transport around the map? You know, roof fights like you're on the roof of the train shooting each other. Rah, rah. You go into the tunnel, you have to lie down, otherwise you get killed if you hit the wall. You know, that will be awesome. That's 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 a great utilization of a train for me. Okay? Yeah, I'm going to have to give you guys a break with these videos because... Um, I just can't stop talking. Okay, so here it is. This is a train tunnel. Okay. And here is the entrance. So it's just it's just, it's just a door frame with a double door. That's all you need. No walls, no nothing. Okay? Double door with a frame. And then I think I've still got the stuff on me. No. Let me just we throw some flint here. Spawn item flint. Okay. And you can use these holes, you know, for chests and then close the chest up with a wall, guys. But again, I'm not about that life. I'm not about that life. And what is going on here? What is going on now? Maintain. Need something. Need something. Oil. Sorry, guys. I got creative here. Yeah. Break oil. Light fire. Okay, so 
Are you serious? All of the oil. Okay. Whatever. You can light up all these. Okay, you can light you can light up the place to make it look really, really nice. Let us some, uh, you know, um, like I could just craft these very, very quickly. So you can just see what it looks like. Okay, so then I can light this one up. You know, you can, you can put fires in here. But again, guys, I'm not crazy about this base design at all. Okay, but there's various things that you can do. Okay, to just give it a nice cave, cave kind of feeling. Okay, and then you can put cars in here and bikes in here and whatever the case would be. And then you just wall off this. Okay, you can put as many walls to the other side as you want. A lot of people use the entire tunnel. I don't really like using the entire tunnel. Okay, so this is about the space that I would want. Um, but th this is the least amount of resources. Okay, but again... Um, it's got it, its advantages and its disadvantages, okay? You require, like, everyone knows, okay, well, everyone knows where you're going to go out of a normal base as well. But again, everyone knows about the train tunnels. Everyone knows about the cabins. So an experienced clan is not going to take long to find you, okay? That's the only negative part. Um, and they can camp the entrance quite easily. It doesn't really matter what train tunnel you use. They can definitely camp the entrance. Like, if you come out here, they can be... <laughs> guy can literally be lying there. A guy can be in the push. A guy can be behind the rock. A guy can be behind the other rock. A guy can be there. You know, so every every train tunnel has got its disadvantages. And again, you are now... You are forced to be in low ground now. Are there some train tunnels that are that's in a bit of a higher ground? Yes, but again... Um, it's got its advantages and disadvantages. Definitely something that I haven't done yet, but people do do it. So my favorite is the base in the snow. And then if I ever have a clan, then I don't care. I don't care who sees me build my base. Okay, that's my motto. When, I, when I've got a clan of five, guys, um, they will usually be experienced. I'll have one professional PvPer, one professional sniper, one professional lock picker, one professional demolition expert, one professional driver. Okay. Um, yeah, and usually when I play with five people, I don't think I've ever played with more than five people. Like I have made videos with more than five people. You know, like um, which you know, which I which which uh, which I won't do again. You know, um, promoting large clans that just destroys everyone is definitely not something that I want to promote. But if I'm with a clan that I'm liking, I don't care. I don't care what you do, you know, or what you want to do. I'm gonna build my base in the middle of no, uh, you know, in the middle in the open. Okay, and again, this is what you're looking for. This is not the perfect location, guys, but this is what you're looking for. Open field with trees in the distance. Okay, trees in the distance. So here's, here's my, you know, this is like a base that I'll build if I've got a clan of five. Okay, so we come here at the back. Got two doors, okay, to get to the vehicles. We don't, I don't really want to connect the vehicles to the base, okay. Uh, I want that to be separate. I can put another door in there. Now that I'm thinking about it, then I put a door in there. Let me check here quickly. No, okay, but you can put a door in there, guys, if you want to. I, I don't want. I don't want to give them two ways to get into the base, and I and I and I like to separate my vehicles um, from our base. That's just me. Okay. So here we go. It's a large base, and one thing you guys will see about this base is that it's very neat. Okay. So there's two ways to build a base. The first way is I like this line over here, and I am going to pick this line. Like, this is my front, this is how the way I want my base to point. 
or there's the shift way. Okay. Now I've only got certain angles. Okay. It's locked at 90, 135, 180 degrees. Okay. Or 135 degrees. It's difficult. You can use the degrees, guys, but it's very difficult. But if you build, if you use the shift key, you can build very linear. Okay. Very linear bases. That's a lot easier to handle. Like that is, that's a straight line, you know, like, you know, you don't really know where these lines are going to go after a while. So one thing you will see is that everything connects very nicely to each other. Okay. So there's the three, three locks, double shock, three locks, double shock, three locks, double shock, three locks, one shock. Okay. Again. Nothing extremely special. Then we've got the towers here. If you don't want the barbed wire to come through the bottom, do not upgrade the bottom part of the tower. Only upgrade the top part of the tower. Okay? Really? Yeah, I can't even climb up here. I thought I moved it. But okay. That's not going to work. Okay, so... Yeah, you're going to have to change this, guys. Um, it's it's going to have to point that way and that way. I thought that was stopping me. I thought it's this thing that's stopping me. Really? Are you serious? Yeah, okay. It's that, it's that that's stopping me as well. Okay. But at least, you know, at least we, we thought a little bit here. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh this is funny this is funny uh okay so that that's a fail can we at least can we use the can we use these towers guys can we use these towers okay yeah we can use these towers okay so now we can have a fight like if they are there in the tree line is fine if they are there in the tree line is fine like we can have a fight now guys we can have a fight now okay ba -ba 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 -ba, you know with our snipers and <gasps> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I find that very, very funny. Okay, so tip: um, make sure there's enough space, and never, you know, never put your towers too close to your wall, because the barbed wire is going to kill you. Okay, just remember that the barbed wire is going to kill you. That's quite a funny way of it of ending it but in any case let's just go back there quickly again okay let's just go back there quickly again so you got you got you guys get the point okay you guys get the point we're spawning my cruiser here get there a little bit quicker bam baby come on cruiser Let's go, man. Here we go, boy. Okay, so you can use the towers, just not how I did it. Because I built everything, everything worked, and then I upgraded everything. And it's when I started upgrading everything that everything fell, that everything fell apart. Okay, unbelievable. It, that barbed wire killed me there. Yeah, guys, put your put your towers away from the walls. Okay, put your towers away from the walls. Um, and then if you ever can, okay, then you can come up. Okay, so everyone knows how towers works. Okay. Um, and now you can come to the roof, okay? And now you can sit with different angles here as well, okay? It's not those small little chests. It's the bigger ones with a little bit of holes, okay? So I can keep control and just check like this, you know? They have to shoot me through this small little hole so I can, you know, I can play around with it a little bit, you know? And then as I'm running around, I can maybe see them, you know? Like they'll, they'll spawn in periodically, but I can move around like this and have a have a spotter, okay? Like where where are the guys? I'm trying to see them. 
if I'm crazy enough, I can just jump up like this. If, you know, if my clan member wants to be suicidal, you know, he can jump up like this to get to get a high, higher point of view. Okay, or throw grenades, whatever. And of course, if he's here, okay, he can still throw grenades all around him. Okay, but instead of using those small cabinets, you can use these big cabinets. Because if you just have the small cabinets, you, you know, they can permanently shoot your head. So you have to be like, you know, they can still shoot you guys. You have to lie down. But with this, you don't have to lie down. You know, you can like shoot me if you can you've got cover you know you've got a lot of you've got a lot of ways to cover and little holes to shoot through okay so there's various things that you can do you know and then you can run around and i don't think you're gonna die if you no so you can jump off if you want to and then again there's just the you know you can make a big base you can make a higher base i just like the same level Okay, so there's no there's no real like if they close to me, some of them won't see me climbing up the roof. Okay, so if they're here, guys, they can't see me climbing up the roof. Like they have to stand here to see me climbing up the roof. But if I had the double story, it you know they they could see me climbing up. They've like I have to climb much longer if it's if it's the big one. If I crafted this this massive one, I have to climb two stories. You know, my guy has to be um, in the open, easy kill on the ladder for twice as long as I would be on that ladder, okay? And then the only person who can really kill me is from this side. But very, very important. Very, very important. Destroy. Destroy. Okay. If they want to steal the vehicles, okay, then any anyone... Let me get on the bike. If they want to steal my vehicle, because I've got a I've got a massive clan now, okay? I've got five members in my clan. So now it's 5v5, man. Yeah? No advantages. If they want to steal the bike, guys, I can kill, I can use all of this. Okay? Like there's the door to get to my vehicles okay i can use all this space here all this space here okay all the space here i can even shoot them from there you know if they want to raid my clan base from the front i can use all this space here or with an M82. Like, guys, I don't think you can build a base there. I'm not 100% sure, but there are open fields with, you know, even if the map is restricted, there there are, um, there are open spaces like this that you can use, okay? But I mean, th this is a cool example for you. If, you know, with, with base restriction, with base building restrictions, like on an official server, if you can build your base very close to something like this, okay, that has got high ground, like I, the, if 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 that guy's lock picking that door, he must think to himself, who is there, or who's in there, okay, or maybe who's there. There's a big ninety degree arc where that guy can get killed from okay like this i don't like using this ground okay so if you pick a spot pick a spot with grass a heck of a lot of grass okay because with with grass you know if you've got a giddy suit on it's going to be very difficult to see you unless um you know unless they are looking at you from high ground like if they're looking at you you know, like from from a distance away, the grass isn't going to spawn in. And a lot of people use low graphic settings. But if, again, you you are in the trees, guys, yes, you know, you can see them in the open field because the grass isn't rendering. But you that's there in the bush have got bushes and trees to cover you. So they have to go into the tree line to come look for you. They have to run through the open grass to come look for you. Or try and flank you all the way while you're sitting still or while you maybe change your position 
Okay? So, again, that is my base building masterclass. <laughs> If you want to know how, you know, if you if you want to know how to make your base unrateable, that's not the channel for you. Second of all, after the wipe, you won't be able to play on Survival Evolved. Okay, if if you if you have learned any glitches, and when I say glitch, I mean putting um, a chair on top of your tower, you know, so that someone can't get into your tower. Any blockages, any way that you can stop someone from getting to your loot, okay, by just lock picking. So that's what I that's what I mean by an exploit, or you know, yeah, that's what I mean by an exploit, like putting a chair on top of a tower, guys, so that no one else can cl climb your tower except you, and um, you know, or just closing your base up that no one can get in there and you can build something, you know, to get in there. It's just not realistic, okay? And it's exploitative, and a lot of people don't want to build their bases like that, okay? Do I know, like, 90% of the exploits? Yes, I do, but I will never use them because it's not enjoyable. If you don't want to be raided, okay? And the, the, the thing is, if you raid and you don't, and you want to make it impossible for other people to raid you, it's like... You're the only guy play. It's like you and a friend playing, and you got a you got a nice toy to play with, but you don't let your you know you don't let your friend play with a toy. You just play with the toy in front of him. It's like you've got a great ball. You don't throw the ball at him so that he can throw the ball back at you. You just play with the ball all the time. Okay, that's the biggest message I want to give you guys at the end of the day. Think about the game as a game to have fun. If you don't throw the ball at the other people, if you don't let other people enjoy themselves with you, then no one's going to play with you. Okay? Think about that. I'm a big guy, but I can't just go and, you know, luckily it's against the rules, but I, I've, I've never been a bully, but there are bullies. You know, and a bully bullies you because you can't bully him a bully usually bullies you because he's bigger than you okay so he's got a major advantage over you and you can say that stuff shit but think about what you're thinking about tough shit no it's not tough shit okay you can be a better person and if you try and focus on being a better person on a survival game raid be raided Kill, be killed. If everyone enjoy them, if everyone enjoys themselves, you will enjoy yourself more. If just you enjoy yourself, it won't last very long. Trust me, guys, it will not last very long. That is, um, people that just enjoy themselves kill servers over time. Okay, so that's it. It's an extremely long video. I'll give you guys maybe a day's worth of rest, okay, after this rant. And um, hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. See you guys later. Cheers.